Hello, Internet. Hey, gang. How's it going? Good. How about you? I wasn't talking to you. I was talking oh, to the Internet. Damn it. Um, cool. All right. I think we are all, all set. Uh, welcome to the first uh, update stream of 2020. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, we have some new... No, we're trying some new things. Um, we have a new Infinity Unicorn. Uh, you know, let us know what you think of the Infinity Unicorn. It was a uh, uh, purchase compliments of my wife who insisted that we try it out on this stream. So here it is. We have the Infinity Unicorn. Let us know your thoughts. Um, uh, George has a spot of water on his shirt. That's new. Yep. This um, wasn't here last year. It wasn't here last year. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty new too. Um, other new things we're doing this year. Um, last year... These live updates were sort of the only way that you could, other than asking questions in Discord and stuff, um, uh, these updates were the only way that you could really keep track of what was going on with Key Cult projects and pre-orders. So uh, those who are a part of our ongoing pre-orders hopefully received an email earlier today. Uh, one thing new that we are going to start doing in 2020 is before these live updates, we're going to send out an email update essentially containing all of this information um, for folks who don't have the time or ability to tune in for these updates. Um, oh, and we're, it's a new time of the day and yeah. a new day of the week. And a new day. It's totally different now, completely new. To, totally different, completely um, new. I know it's a lot of change. Um, we do indeed have new new titles starting from number one. Yeah. 2020 update number one. So, so the reason... It's just easier to digest information in a written form. If you don't want to sit down and watch things, you can kind of skim through what's better. So we feel like the more ways we provide information and updates for people who have pre-ordered from us, uh, the better. Um, we, a few people have commented that it's kind of hard to find information. So we're, we're changing and adding things to make it more convenient for everyone because we want to incorporate as much as we can. Indeed. Um, okay, so uh, on that note, let's move into things. The first thing we are going to talk to uh, talk about today is the number two Rev One Bickery auction, um, which ended today. Um, we did our first auction of this format uh, in June uh, for the number one, uh, and the final price for that blew us away. Um, really helped a lot. Yeah. Uh, it it significantly. Uh, increased the amount that we made from that particular run. It had a very meaningful impact on our trajectory. It let us um, do larger runs and grow faster. And I think that this auction is truly no different. Yeah. Um, so the final price uh, for this particular auction was uh, $2,350. So $2,350. $2, um, we are pretty blown away by that. Um, the fact yeah. that so many people value the work that we're putting out so highly is extremely exciting, and we are very grateful for everyone's support. Um, and and we are, yeah, we are we are extremely surprised by this result. Um, we expected it to be lower. Uh, there were a lot of very high bids that we still thought were high. Um, so, anyways, thank you all very very much for that. Um, for those who already <clears throat> paid, uh, we shipped out your boards already. Um, yep. They went out earlier today. Uh, hopefully, uh, the remaining folks pay uh, later today or tonight, and we can ship them out tomorrow morning. Um, if we if we get any no pays, then what will happen is that we will invoice the next people on the list, and then that will change the final price um, slightly, uh, and we will issue partial refunds to those who have already paid to get it down to that. To that actual price so um someone is asking uh what was the 11th bid that that is the 11th bid is that uh 2350 yeah. so it, it actually so happened that there were two people who bid that amount so the 10th and 11th bid was that amount and we randomly chose one person to be the winner so i'm very sorry to the person who bid that amount and didn't get it in. If anyone doesn't pay, then if you know who you are, you will be the next person on the list uh, to, to get an invoice. So maybe sacrifice a goat. 
something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so again, uh, thank you all so much. It makes a very big difference to us. It makes a really big difference to our business. It lets us be more ambitious in the things that we want to do, the projects we want to do. Um, yeah. So thank you. We really appreciate it. And it's only, like he said, it, it only helps us grow and, and do more and more exciting things in the future. Uh, we're super excited for 2020. Um, and this, this definitely helps put us in a trajectory where we can do a lot of the things that we had planned to do. Yep. And pretty yep. just. Um, cool. So um, let's see. Uh, next up is the Rama X key cult brass keycaps. Uh, for months, we have not had an update on this. I'm very happy to say we finally do have an update on this. Production has finished. Uh, the keycaps are with the Rama Works team. Um, my understanding is they are currently packing them up into uh, their own Rama Works bags, and then they're going to ship them to us. Once we have them, we will try to turn them around and get them out to uh, pre-orders as, as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, we already have we have boxes uh, and we have boxes, little boxes that we're going to send them out in. Um, it should all be very quick once we have them in. So uh, we are very excited uh, for those to come in. Um, we're sorry it's taken so long, uh, but uh, really eager for that final result. So we've had a couple. We sent out an email earlier today. We've had a, we've had a few people uh, contact us with uh, address change information. If you ordered a Rama keycap, we know that it's been a long time since that happened, and life changes so if you have a change of address please get a hold of us within the next week or so uh, because as soon as we get them we're going to be shipping them out and it's going to be really really complicated to uh to change addresses after the fact i think um on that note uh i'm i think we should send out an email explicitly to all of those people yeah so we will also do that so we will send out an email to all of the uh explicitly to the rama uh keycap pre-order participants um, so that people can respond if they have address changes and we can get that updated. So yep. I think that makes the most sense. Um, so there's that. Um, that is the update for that. Oh, okay, we do have some extras. So we ordered, um, I think we have about, we're, we're, we're not really seeing t exact numbers on this, but we have like a relatively limited number of extra keycaps that will be for sale. Um, they will go up for sale after we have fulfilled all of the pre-orders. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not like the day after, but fairly soon after. Um, it will be pretty obvious to people who are paying attention when we're fulfilling those and sending them out. So um, you can kind of look for those going up for sale soon after. I think that we are not going to do a timed launch for that. I think we are probably yeah. just going to put them up. Um, because I know that there, we, we try to be accommodating of people in different time zones so we may put up like half of our stock at once and then maybe half of our stock like later in the day or something like that yeah um but uh but yeah anyways yeah you guys making the real decisions here on stream that's how that's how we, how we that's how we roll <laughs> um on the fly decision on, on the fly decision making so anyways yes those extras will be available um uh hopefully I don't know. I honestly have a hunch that they're going to sell out pretty instantly, but um, but we'll find out. Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. So, um, okay, cool. So uh, next up is the number one hundred and sixty and one hundred and sixty-five. So those orders are in. Uh, production is ongoing. Um, I believe that that some amount of machining is currently happening now. Um, uh, there also there's a bit more because we're using different. Met different coding types. Some of them are anodized, some are e-coded. There are actually different tolerances between parts. Um, so they are working through making sure that parts that are e-coded fit just as well as parts that are anodized and vice versa, that there aren't gonna be like gaps and stuff like that. So um, that takes a little bit longer, but they're working on that. Production is well underway. Uh, we've already received PCBs, or uh, I'm sorry, we haven't received PCBs, but um, we, were, we, are, we believe that we are going to receive them before Chinese New Year, which is coming up in about a week. Yeah. Um, so that is going to be a two week delay on everything where basically all factories are, are closed. Yeah. So um, they're trying to ship them out before Chinese New Year. The PCBs. Might, yeah, the PCBs. So they so we might get PCBs a little once the Chinese New Year holiday starts, but they're trying to get them out before that. Yeah. So uh, the 
chassis themselves, we probably, two weeks from now when we do our next update, it's unlikely that we're going to have any substantive update because we're going to be in the middle of, it's going to be in the middle of the Chinese New Year holiday. Um, we are, are not going to want to pull uh, our representatives away from, from their holiday. So, uh, yeah. so anyways, things are going okay. It'll probably be a month before there's a <laughs> substantive update on that. Um, hopefully after that, we can get a nice status update on where everything stands uh, and maybe an updated ETA. Uh, right now, we have no particular reason to believe that we won't be able to fulfill around April, um, but we will continue to update uh, folks whenever our expectations change. So, And as with the number two, they it is very possible that our expectations will change, in which case we'll keep people up to date. Yeah. Um, we're going to enter the Q&A portion of the stream. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to put that on, uh, to, to put that in chat. And uh, before we jump into it, uh, Swingful pointed out that we did include a commissions price sheet mm. um, in our commissions page. We kind of figured that just being more transparent with commission prices was the better way to do things. So um, on... Our commissions page is our commissions pricing as of now. That's all subject to change, and we will, you know, update the sheet as our prices change. Um, so, if you guys are curious about commissions or anything like that, uh, please uh, check out our commissions pricing sheet. And if you and if it's within your budget, uh, feel free to fill out a form. Um, uh, yeah, one other thing, actually, um, really quickly before we hop into uh, Q and A, a few folks. Well, quite a few folks real noticed that on our schedule page, we added Key Cult Apparel as an upcoming project. Um, that is, I'm really excited about it. It is still underway. Um, we are making good progress on it. Uh, we will hopefully be getting uh, samples for the items that we are going to be offering. It's going to be an open pre-order. Everyone is going to have a chance to get it. Um, uh, and and we'll have a considerable amount of time to join that pre-order. So uh, hopefully we will have something to share in February related to that. Um, yeah. I don't think that we are going to uh, have anything to share on that, anything concrete to share on that this month, yeah. um, but it is is moving along and hopefully in February, it's possible that um, a pre-order actually opens in February. So uh, definitely excited about that. Um, can the next key call come with a unicorn? Uh, we are currently working with the unicorn farm uh, but they can't guarantee numbers, so we don't have a lot to share about that. Yeah. What's on Zach's left arm? They're asking if it's a a um, cult tattoo. No, this is a tattoo I've had for uh, a couple of years now. Um, it is a, a rising or setting sun facing me, uh, depending on, I guess, whether you're feeling up or down. Um, <laughs> uh, will the production numbers of 10 kilos increase in the foreseeable future? Yes. Um, next run of 10 kilos will be larger. Um, and then, uh, we are, we are actively working on increasing our production runs one over the other. And there will come a time where the number that we feel comfortable uh, fulfilling is essentially just an open pre-order. And when that time comes, we'll just have open pre-orders. So, yep. um, yeah, I mean, for reference <clears throat> between our first run of 2019 to our last order of 2019, we increased from 40 keyboards to 400 keyboards. Uh, so our total order between 160s and 165s is 400 kits. Um, so we are definitely making progress and in increasing our volumes, and we will continue to do so for future boards. Yeah. And the next board is the number one 10 kilos, and we're doing a larger volume of that as well. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, uh, never mind 314. Where should one contact Key Cult about serious business inquiries? Uh, you can send us an email, uh, hello at keycult.io. Yep, that's probably the best the best thing to do. So a lot of things about um, we we are open to hearing about any sort of business inquiries, but a lot of time uh, we just don't have the the time to pursue a lot of really interesting stuff because it's only the two of us, and uh, we we have our own ongoing projects. So. Um, Feel free to contact us, but um, there's a chance that we will just say that we sadly don't have enough time yep. for that stuff. But um, let's see, did I miss uh, any more teases uh, from that Instagram tease a bit back? I believe that was the the tease that uh, Teha posted. 
Um, oh, yeah. Uh, no, but uh, I believe <clears throat> that there should be more on that fairly soon. Yeah, that's um, that's in Teha's court at the moment. So yeah. um, next he's... So bug him. So bug him about it, essentially. <laughs> Tell him, oh my god, talk more about Kiko on your stream and please yeah. let us know. It's, it's a terrible thing. Exactly. Um, number three in 2020, yes. Uh, we are prototyping, and we are figuring things out. Shh. Sorry. Oh, the, the leaks. Oh, no. I said we were going to do a number three. It's That's true. Yes. Uh, number three will very likely happen in 2020. Uh, it will be a completely new design from what we've released. Um, any cool new materials uh, you guys want to experiment with? Um, I don't know. I mean, that we're going to experiment with? I'm not sure. Uh, that we want to experiment. I think that it polycarbonate would be, copper would be kind of cool. Copper would be kind of cool. I think I like the way that uh, polished copper patinas. Um, so I think that doing something that incorporates sort of the patina of copper over time, expecting it to kind of age would be cool. Um, I'm thinking like you know, high end cookware that's made of copper and like hanging. It's like you know it, it browns over time. I think that that's really beautiful. Uh, I think I also think that like polished brass would be really is, like, is a really beautiful material that would be really cool to do something. We've done a lot of like sandblasted brass. Um, titanium is also like a cool material that I'm I'm not sure if we're going to incorporate, but would be cool to at least like prototype some stuff out. Yeah, I mean anodized titanium <clears throat> looks really cool. Yeah, uh, you get this really cool sort of chameleon effect. Yeah. Um, it, it is it is very neat. And if like and if you know money were no object, doing something with like damasteel would be amazing. because uh, that's like a beautiful but a full damasteel case would be like a three hundred thousand dollar case. And that and I feel like there's not a lot of room for that. Um yeah. But yeah, there's also like a couple like in terms of other materials that are completely out there, um I think like Corian is really cool as a material. Um yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff that we would like to do some stuff with. Um, Ninety percent of them we're probably never going to do anything with substantive, but maybe. Yep. Uh, Relentless Frost asks, "What are you both looking forward to uh, the most in this new year?" I don't know. It's hard to. I guess I. I personally prefer to take things kind of one step at a time. So I get. I'm the kind of person who gets. You can ask George. I get really focused and highly motivated on one thing uh, and I sort of end up bouncing from thing to thing. Uh, and so the thing that I have been really excited about lately has been the apparel. I've been putting a lot of effort and time and thought into that. Uh, I think we've come up with something that's really cool uh, and I am, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to that happening. But there's a ton of other projects that hopefully will will release throughout the year that I'm also extremely excited for, but uh, not not necessarily projects that we can talk about just yet. Yeah. Um, any ideas for new finishes? Not particularly. Um, I don't really know. I guess I'm, I'm kind of new to the, to the fabrication stuff. Maybe Zach has more ideas, but besides, you know, like polishing and sandblasting and PVD and anodizing and stuff like that, um, I don't really know about a lot of other finishing options. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think there's anything in particular that I'm that's that's on my that's on my mind. But um, but yeah, um, I think we missed qu a, quite a few questions a little further up. We we, we kind of got off on, on a few on a couple tangents. Um, Enigma asks, uh, long way off, but any planned updates on the uh, number one Rev two? Uh, basically, the re-release of the number one ten keyless. Uh, would that happen before the one sixty and one sixty five fulfillment? We don't know. Um, hopefully, yes, it will happen before the 160 and 165 fulfillment. Hopefully, yes, unless yeah. there are some sort of delays in samples and prototypes that we aren't expecting. Um, but and the same thing happened with the 160s and 165s. Like we had every intention to do a pre-order for those before the number two fulfillment, and it happened after the number two fulfillment. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Kedlis asks, any chance you guys are going to hire more people to work with Kikol? Um, it's not currently planned. I could imagine, depending on how fulfillment goes with larger volumes, hiring some people part-time to help us with just simple logistics things. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that we are, we're definitely not, 
we're not thinking too much about full-time hires right now. Um, yeah, so. I mean, first things first is like we need to start essentially paying ourselves a reasonable uh, regular salary uh, before we can start considering uh, hiring someone full-time. Uh, so that's our that's our big focus. This That's going to be one of our focus this year is like how can we grow to a point that we can start affording to pay ourselves so that we're not like a huge deficit. Yeah. Um, uh, Vor, I don't actually know how to pronounce your name. I'm going to say Vor. Uh, is there a potential for a number two style 65%? There is extremely high potential for yes. a number two 65%. Take that to mean whatever you want. Yeah. I know it's pretty, it's it's pretty, pretty ambiguous. Vague. It's pretty yeah. vague to say, but there is extremely high chance. <clears throat> um, is the goal, uh, Swingful asks, is the goal to make future releases compatible with other future releases, i.e. the number two rev one and the rev two interchangeable parts? No. Um, we have decided, or, or at least I have sort of decided that um, part compatibility is not a super high priority for me. I rather, if there are meaningful changes, we're not gonna make arbitrary changes, but if there are meaningful changes that we can make that we think will improve the board, but it breaks compatibility with other arbitrary parts, then we're still going to make those changes. I am trying to be more conscious of plate compatibility um, so that uh, people can buy plates for their older boards more easily. So yeah. even though the number two changed, for instance, um, uh, between the original release in April and, and this release, the plates are compatible. Um, when we re-release the number one uh, tin keyless, it is likely to have some differences to the one that we released earlier this year, but the plates will remain compatible. Um, we've answered this a few times, but Theory asked, what did we do uh, before starting Kiko full-time? Zach was a programmer, and I sold... Um, small aircraft and managed property and managed property um, a jack of two trades a jack of two trades yeah. now of three so yeah hey uh, are we planning on retiring any old designs after recent runs perhaps the number one style we were talking about this but it's not gonna happen recent anytime soon we feel like the not we feel like our designs are kind of still fairly new like the number one and the number two um are about a year old i guess number one is like maybe two years old and the number two is like six months old so are wait, 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 what what do you mean the number one design yeah is about two and a half years old right sure. okay and the number two design is like six months old because we released it like what six seven months ago okay yeah so like i feel like those are still pretty young designs right, i don't think it. that we'll ever really retire a design but we would like it's very likely that we'll like update the aesthetics of a design to more reflect our current design language um or i don't think that our design language has changed but it will change in the future and when that happens we'll change the aesthetic um so it might look slightly different but it still will feel like a number one yeah i think that if at some point if one of our designs starts to feel stale or just doesn't fit anymore then then sure we might retire <clears throat> something but we're, we're definitely not at that point yet um Nevermind314 asks, who does most of the mechanical design and manufacturing prep for the keyboards? Um, I do most of the design, and uh, we sort of split the manufacturing prep uh, between us. Uh, yeah. So I, I tend to do the various preparation work for our larger production runs. Uh, George is the point person for all commissions and does uh, a large portion of the preparation for... Um, for that and working with people on commissions. So it's, it's, it's split sort of between the two of us. Um, work tech asks, would you encourage people to join keyboard design, uh, to join the keyboard design business on a full-time basis? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really hard to say. I feel like, I honestly feel like we are probably the beneficiaries of some amount of luck, uh, in, yeah. in terms of how, well we have done in 2019 um up till this point uh so i i think it also helped that i was a fairly active member of the community and a lot of people knew of me um before we started doing key cult as a full time business uh, i 
I think there are a lot of people very successfully doing keyboard stuff part time. And that probably is the thing that makes the most sense for most people. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this full time if it wasn't because our spouses were literally supporting us for the past like year. Yeah, um, that's definitely true. Because we would just have no income. So. Right. We have been essentially we have been essentially reliant on them and for the entirety of 2019. Hopefully yeah. that changes in 2020 and that we actually become uh, sort of a sustainable business uh, where uh, we are also making appropriate salaries, but. Um, yeah. But it's definitely hard to get to that point. Um, yeah. I also think that uh, the Rumbleworks team is someone, uh, you, you brought that up as an example. Um, I also don't think that they were full-time until maybe very recently. And yeah. I think that uh, one half of the Rumbleworks team, uh, Kate, is, is I, I, I think maybe still not full-time. Um, I don't know. So anyways, I, it, is, it is definitely hard to do. And there are some serious opportunity costs to being full-time in this particular market, so. Theory asks if we have any plans to add a commissions gallery to the site. Um, we haven't thought of it, but it's a really good idea and a really, um, so we will think about it. Thank you so much for bringing it up. Yeah. Um, I think that once we have a, a few more commissions under our belt, we'll probably add a commissions gallery so people can check out past commissions and stuff. But we do post them to Instagram. You, 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 um, if you we skipped that. your question, sorry, someone posted. Um, uh, if we skip, skip your question, I apologize. It's sometimes a little hard to keep track of them. Just um, just ask it again. Um, how many commissions have we done? Um, I don't want to release that information. Um, we've done a good few. Uh, it's not in the, like, it's not like in the dozens, but it's also not just been a couple. Um, um, I think, can we enhance it? Um, or can we enhance it? Uh, asked. He asked how many people won both the number one and the number two in the raffle. I don't know. Um, oh, oh, one like number like they they won the raffle and for the number one and the number two. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We don't keep track of that very well. Yeah, I mean, well, we do have like we have the historical data and we could go back and figure it out, but I haven't. I didn't like do that today, and so I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, Manella asked, "What's the best comm channel to keep up to date with upcoming releases for 2020?" Uh, our newsletter. Uh, keycult.io slash updates and our Discord channel are by far the best ways. We are most communicative on our Discord um, and any major release that we have, we will send out an email uh, to people. We yep. don't send out a ton of emails because we like to not spam people, but uh, for things that we think that all of our customers would like to know about, we send out emails. Instagram is also a good way to follow stuff. Um, yeah, I, th I think that we probably err a little too far on the side of not sending emails. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we probably should send, I, I think that people would probably appreciate more regular updates on what's coming up. So, um, but like we average less than like an email a month, basically. Yeah. So it's, it's a very low volume update list um, and it will definitely include information when we have planned releases for sure. However, uh, updates like this, the Switch, um, release or the the um, this sort of twitch update and on discord uh is a better place if you want to know like more far in advance because we'll talk more during these sorts of things about like you know apparel is kind of coming up soon even though we're probably not going to send out an email about that until we have a concrete date for yeah. the opening of the pre-order so um does apple pay work on our site yes um that was from seven steps and enigma studios are we going to start updating our website blog? Um, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we we have not posted a new blog post in a while. Um, we sort of... I guess I don't really know what, what we would update about. Yeah, so we... Like, we, put, we made a post about the Vickery Auction stuff, for instance. Um, yeah. We don't... So... Right now, we don't have plans to just have like a regular blog just for the sake of having a regular blog um yeah. but if we feel like we have things that are worthwhile to say um or to write about then then yes we will add to our blog i guess this is maybe a good little nudge that we should that we should maybe reconsider that a little more and think more about um uh, what kind of stuff could be on the blog yeah um, like for instance we sent out an update email earlier today that's just this update in text and that could probably also be on the blog as like yeah. a reasonable archive but regardless um yeah um 
Any plans for ergonomic boards, numpads? Um, not any plans, but I would personally like to at least do a numpad. I don't know about ergo boards. Yeah, I'm hesitant to work on... So I'm personally hesitant to make, to design form factors that I have no experience with and, and like don't personally use because I, I feel like I would just do a worse job of it. So maybe in the future, we will do some more research into ergo boards um, and into split keyboards uh, and potentially release something in that vein. I mean, that but might also be a good opportunity to like collaborate with someone who- Who does know. Who does know. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, maybe, but we don't have any plans right now for yeah. it to answer the question. Um, uh, we're not going to say how many people out of the 10 have paid their invoice, um, Obsidian Red. Um, uh, seven steps, yes. Current payment is Google Pay, Apple Pay, and credit card. Uh, we don't accept PayPal on, in, uh, in most cases. Um, is there any chance that keyboard should be paid before the raffle, and if one doesn't win, that person gets a refund? So I guess... That is in order to prevent people from entering not around, yeah. paying or just entering um, extraneously. Um, so I think that like if it were a serious issue where where a lot of people entered and then didn't pay, then that might be problematic. But for instance, for the number two Red One raffle that we just had, 100% of people who won the raffle paid. Um, so we had no issue with that. Uh, it remains to be seen whether people pay uh, the whether everyone pays the for the victory auction. However, um, that's also trickier because you don't actually know we don't actually know the price until yeah. and, also, and also just like it, like processing refunds. I don't. And I'm also yeah, like, we don't, don't have a good automated way look. to do it. And also, I don't know how it's going to look. Like for example for the victory auction, like or even for the regular raffle, like how is it going to look for us to charge nine hundred people? And then refund eight hundred of those people. Like, I think that we, if we were, if we were to do that, we would have to use a different system. We wouldn't be able to use our current yeah. e-commerce platform to do it because it just doesn't support that workflow. So we would have to do a different system. Uh, I would have to implement something that allows us to authorize charges but not post them. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we're probably not going to do that. Um, let's see. Um, I think that might be. There are, there are a few there are a couple more I think. Okay. I guess um, Vor asks any plans on doing a key cult desk mats and wrist pads? Um, yes, uh, but we don't know one yet. So we're we're currently working on figuring out when we can fit those in. Um, did we say how many number two rev ones were sold in the raffle? About sixty five. About sixty five, and then ten for the victory. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm I'm kind of a little sick. Um, let's see. Is there any buyer protection for Apple Pay? So I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on how you pay through Apple Pay. So I think that with Apple Pay, you are ultimately paying through a credit or debit card, and it's just being processed with Apple as the um, transaction medium. So you have the exact same buyer protection that you have with any credit or debit card purchase. Um, which, which, which actually is is very good buyer protection. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't realize this. There seems to be a, a misconception, I think, among a lot of people that um, PayPal, for instance, is a safer way of making transactions than by like credit card, and that's that's not the case. Yeah. Um, PayPal is manipulatable by both the buyer and the seller. Um, so. For a variety of reasons, we, we choose to only deal with, with credit and debit cards, um, except in very rare circumstances. Uh, so, But yes, you have whatever buyer protection is afforded to you by your credit or debit card that you're ultimately using to, to make the payment. Visionaire, I did not pack any of the boxes today. All of those were packed by um, Allie. So That's true, she did pack all of them. No one yeah. is gonna get sick. Um, Okie doke, let's see. I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you everyone uh, again for, thank you for tuning in. Um, 
Thank you very, very much to everyone who participated in the auction. Thank you also to everyone who just participated in the regular raffle. Yeah. Um, your support and excitement really does mean the world to us. It helps keep us motivated. Uh, it helps us be more ambitious uh, and push ourselves to continue increasing volume, uh, even when that's kind of a scary thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so we are really excited for this year. Um, and yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, in the future, moving forward, as we just finished the sale, we're going to have some more free time. So the Key Cult workshop streams will probably kick up again. Mm -hmm. um, and Corey, to answer your question, uh, we will do a pour over uh, stream on the next Key Cult workshop. All right. Next week, Key Cult workshop, pour over stream. We're going to do some great All right. coffee. Cool. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night and uh, take, take care. care. Next time.